Think you've seen it all, huh? Think you know all there is to know about Vault Hunters, Bandits, Corporations, and nobody loser types? Well, you don't know Skag Diddly. Take Promethea, for example. A civilized place, as far as planetary-sized piles of excrement go. A planet still recovering from its war with the Malawan Corporation. The rival Atlas Corporation is in bad shape. Reese Strongfork, the big shot CEO with the regrettable mustache, is scrambling. He's on the cusp of something big. But he's not the only one. And into this pressure cooker steps... Dr. Anuradha Dar. Genius inventor, socially awkward, uh, do-gooder type. She works for Atlas, been tinkering with a big, award-winning idea. Her brother, Octavio Wallace Dar, Meridian City's most well-known man, at least in his own mind. He's convinced his big break is just around the corner. And Fran Miskowitz, Purveyor of Reese Strongfork's favorite Frogger flavor. She's hoping for a big insurance payout after that regrettable Malawan laser incident. So, you're probably asking yourself, what makes these three so special? And the answer is nothing. Yet. You're free now. Go. Go, be free. Run! Morning! What? Oh, I mean... Good morning. <laughs> Seriously. Again? Yep. Another busy day. Work, work, work. Am I right? By channeling the Iridium's energy through a multiphasic refraction lens, I can reproduce the, as yet, inexplicable powers of the sirens. Maybe not the wings thing, which is so cool, but uh, crucially, the ability to manipulate an object safely through space-time. I'm Anu, the ultimate siren fangirl, but for totally scientific reasons, I swear, and I'm so close to replicating the signature move of my all-time favorite siren, Lilith. R.I.P. Pong. <laughs> I was saying, in addition to forever altering the nature of conflict vis-a-vis -vis offering a non-lethal resolution, my device could also change the world. For the better. Imagine, a way for people to solve their problems without killing each other. I literally can't. I just have to figure out how to actually bring back the objects I faced away. And also, where they go. And also, what happens to them? Simple. Interdepartmental demonstration scheduled for two weeks from today. Dr. Anuradha Dar, signing off. Oh, snap. Two weeks? Really? It's going to be ready by then? You always seem so hesitant to put a timeline on this bad boy, so you know, two weeks. Wow. It is. Or it will be. Surely two weeks is enough time for a huge breakthrough, right? Probably, right? Sure. I should have said three months. What was I thinking? All I've got to do is just figure out the next step. That's it. There's got to be something I'm missing. Figure it out with, like, your intuition or with your tech goggles? I would like to think both. Maybe start with the tech goggles, though. There's a button? On the side? 
Okay, goggles. Let's try a diagnostic. So, for starters, I should probably put an actual power source in there, huh? You needed the goggles for that. Now, where did I put that iridium ore? Now, if it were me, I'd have it on my desk. Line of sight at all times. But that's just me. I don't know why I ever thought a Jabberman translator was a good idea. It worked, sure, but it turns out all they want to do is fornicate and fling feces. What a waste of time. to have the iridium ore in your pocket? What? No, of course not. Why would I keep iridium in my pocket? Your pocket just seems full. <laughs> oh, don't get cheeky with me, boss. Not unless you mean it. What? No. Hiding the key component to your life's work from yourself? <laughs> you are one eccentric. Were you seriously about to scam me without my consent? Not cool. I'm... We really need to work on your people skills, boss. If you want to know what's in my pocket, ask. Fong, can you tell me what's in your pocket? It's a Vaultlander figure. Some of the other lab assistants and I like to play before work. I totally creamed Roberts this morning and this was my sweet reward. And would a clearer-headed Anu remember the code to her safe for once? lock always jam. Didn't we put in an IT ticket for this? Have you tried turning it off and on again? What? That's... No, that's impossible. Just try the combination again, I guess. Grab some money for lunch while I've got this bad boy unlocked. Did you say lunch? You buying? In the toolbox, maybe? Trusty tools. 
So much potential for science in these simple implements. And what's that? Oh, Anu, really? Left the rare and incredibly expensive ore inside the toolbox again, didn't you? Uh, maybe. Um, it's like it's singing. Like a siren song? Like the sweet sound of success! Not financial, though I could really use the money to get my brother off Promethea. But ethical success! <sighs> Where we use innovation and technology to help people and protect life, not casually destroy it as a matter, of course. Like... like... Don't you know? I know. Like profit-focused warmongers with no moral compass beyond the almighty dollar. Exactly. AKA Atlas's motto. No cruelty. No killing. No compromise. You're a revolutionary, boss. Ooh! Who are we rising up against? Ah! Not that kind of revolutionary, Timmy. Don't worry. I won't. Revolutions typically generate a 30% increase in market share. Good for business! In fact, the only thing better for business than revolutions are the vicious campaigns of suppression by the ruling elite that inexorably follow. You make it sound like we're war profiteers. We do manufacture weapons. For now, Fong. For now. Right. Anyway, are you here for something in particular, Timmy? Yes, please. I'm here on behalf of Mr. Strongfork to inquire why our company's test subjects are somehow... liberated. I'm sorry. Test subjects? The Javers. Liberated. Correct. Your comprehension level is impeccable. You should have no trouble explaining why the Javers are loose. Again. They're currently running amok down the laboratory hallways. The janitorial staff is prepping for what I like to call... Go Jabber Grabber Time! Why would I know that? What even makes you think I have anything to do with it? I'm not the only one that works in this lab. What? What? Slag off! That soup's uncool! Oh, Dr. Dar, we know it was you. But you have no proof. The thing is, every use of credentials to access a security feature is locked. We have a record of your ID being used to open the cages. Someone else could have grabbed it. The other thing is, our security surveillance system filmed you doing it. If it's any consolation, the footage from this instant was captured at a much more flattering angle than the footage of you releasing the Jabbers those other times. Don't they deserve to be free? Oh, I'm not authorized to dispense ethical judgments about Atlas policies. Well, now that we've got that straightened out... Ah, Dr. Dar, you have an update to your calendar incoming. It's an appointment with Mr. Strongfork. Oh, uh, I can check my schedule to see... The appointment is now. Oh, and, uh, what is it regarding? It's a reprimand session for Mr. Strongfork to reprimand you. Oh. Not that you deserve my help after throwing me under the bus, but... You probably shouldn't go in empty-handed, you know? Right. Sorry, and... Right.
What's up, Octavio? Oh, Nedster! School's out already? <laughs> hey, Papa Girardi! I can smell your space calzones from here! Ah, thanks! I, I need a new name for them! Might also need to stop doing that problematic accent! Yeah, I, I know. Miss Johnson, did you get a cybernetic leg? That thing's straight fire. Jesse, how's it hanging, dude? Oh, you know, Octavio, it's a brand new day filled with endless possibilities and excitement. Sounds like it. New Agorex, who it is? <laughs> Another new device? Come on, Octavio. It's Radon. But listen, I'm almost done with this demolition job. <laughs> Wanna head to Paco's for tacos? Ooh, do they come in my favorite flavor? Please don't say. Three! <laughs> you such a mooch! I'll see you there. Octavia. God, jeez. I anticipated your arrival and have been waiting in a location that would not obstruct others. No, no, I, I wasn't scared, <laughs> like at all. <laughs> your biometrics appear otherwise. Your voice resembles a nine-year-old girl's. Nine-year... <clears throat> Nine-year-old girls are the future, so thank you. I acquired the publication you requested. Come on. Come on, come on! Your biometrics read extreme disappointment. It's Forge's super successful Dirty 30. It lists the planet's most promising, innovative entrepreneurs, and I'm not on it. Again! Have you accomplished some extraordinary business transaction to warrant your acknowledgement on this list? I survived Malawan's invasion. And I'd like to think that my social influence has kept this city together after the war left it in damn near ruins. No would have been a more succinct answer. Look, I'm working on it. Why? This list is merely the opinion of other humans. You should not value it. As a machine, I find this accolade pointless to strive for. Getting on Forge's super successful Dirty 30 is a lifelong dream. It's irrefutable proof to the rest of the world that Octavia Wallace Star exists. That I'm a somebody. I know you're somebody. Yeah, but you're an assassination bot, which makes it weird. Perhaps you are disappointed, but look on the bright side. Many of these celebrated humans have contracts on their heads. Bivington Bradwick, for example, has numerous bounties on his life, but no assassination bot can kill him. He is rich and important enough that he never has to leave his home or do anything for himself. You, however, are not on this list. You're anonymous, unrecognized, a nobody. This is beneficial for your survival. But not beneficial for my image. I mean, all the best business people have probably at least killed someone to succeed. Something to warn a bounty anyway. I'm doing whatever it takes to maintain appearances. Come on, if there was a list of all the best assassination bots, wouldn't you want to be on it? No. I pour my heart and soul confide my lifelong ambition to be on this list and you act all superior robot on me. But I am a superior robot. I have killed 963 people. You have killed no one. Don't diminish my potential. It's not that I couldn't kill. I could, if that's what it took. Despite your erratic behavior today, I am in need of your assistance. Sorry, I'm busy networking, innovating, shaking hands. 
After Mal One killed nearly half the merchants in the city, we've all needed to make new contacts. This would be an actual job, with money. Your various business concepts like financing, marketing, public appeal. Kidding! <laughs> I'm not busy. Totally pranked you. <laughs> you just got Octavio. Interesting phrasing. Perhaps I'll adopt that. Uh, well, that's kind of my thing, but... Now, on to business matters. You will aid me, as you have before, in confirming the names of my targets before I shoot two ion slugs into their brain. You know how to talk. You have a mouth. You will prove exceptional. Meet some new people, develop some street cred. This could be good for business. That's the spirit. And let's not forget the aforementioned money. Whatever it takes to get my business off the ground. Do you actually have an idea for your business? Tons! A few. I'm working on it. and rat ass. Congratulations, Francine Miskowitz. It has been 90 days since your last uncontrolled outburst of rage. All right, all right. Let's make it to 91. Get to work. Take pride in your ability to maintain a positive attitude even though a Malawan space laser decimated your Frogurt shop and subsequently reduced its Acronet Yowl rating by 3.5 stars. Thank you, Sponsorbot. Your Yowl rating is now negative 3.5 stars. Thank you, sponsor bot. As soon as the insurance money comes in, this place will look good as new. Warning, do not think about your malfunctioning TDR appliances, for which you still owe the TDR Corporation 600,000 galactic credits. Think about the fact that these machines are also licensed from Teteor and thus cannot be sold. As soon as the insurance fella approves my claim to fix this place up, I'll have Teteor paid back quicker than a chick chick reload. Some guns reload very slowly. Thanks for reaching out, sponsor bot. You're my rock. It's a bad metaphor. If you're going to do metaphors, be better at them. Oh, connection's gone squirrely. Can't hear you. Talk later. Everything is going to be just fine. My new slaughter matic combat vegetable knife slices artichokes as easily as arteries. <clears throat> We're not open yet. And... Lore. How's business treating you, handsome? Not bad. If there's two things you can count on Prometheans buying, it's bullets and brew. Place looks as charming as ever. I thought the insurance money was supposed to come through by now. Claims guys coming by today, they've been jerking me around, saying I have to pass some sort of final interview to get my cash. How dare they not trust a kind old lady like you? Want me to shoot them? It's been a while since I shot anyone. A week, at least. Still, I'm a steady trigger. So long as I've got some caffeine in me. How could they deny my claim? Look at this place. I'm sure you're right. 
All insurance workers are compassionate, honourable people. Well, the claims fella gives me any lip. He'll find out how persuasive I can be. What a disturbing euphemism. Thanks for this, by the by. Samesies. Uh-oh. Looks like the morning rush has arrived. I'm outy. All right, all right, all right. Time to make the Frogerts. Good morning. Welcome to Franz Frogerts. What can I get you today, hon? Uh, a large peanutty buddy with sprinkles. Here you go, sweetheart. I don't even think this is edible. No tell until you try it. That'd be six seventy-five, please. Welcome to Mr. Strongfork's office! Please make yourself comfortable while I inform him of your presence. You've got to be kidding me! One more thing goes wrong! Just apologize for the jobbers. Won't happen again, sir. You cannot lose this job. My idea is a paradigm shift. One that could help Atlas beat the competition. Yeah, that sounds great. Convincing. Job saving. Right? Dr. Dar, I'll see you now. Dr. Dar? Unfriggin' believable! Mr. Strongfork, uh, is everything all right? Because I can come back if... No, 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 everything's fine. It's fine. I just got outbid again on an ultra-rare Zero Vault Landers figurine. Again. It's an investment, you know, you know, you know what, forget it. No, never, never mind, just, just come on in, have a seat. Thanks for coming up on such short notice, but I figured I ought to just set a meeting as quickly as possible so we could touch base on the issue of you keep releasing jabbers on the ship! Again! You've gotta stop doing that. And also, we're in space. We're all contained animals up here, Dr. Dar. Sir, I'm just having kind of a bad day. I apologize. Mmm, maybe it's more like you have bad judgment? You've had a string of failed prototypes, I have a whole folder documenting your corporate violations, and, according to this peer review submitted by a research assistant, Fuang, that came in about three minutes ago, Ugh. you show questionable leadership skills marked by indecisiveness. You realize this is 
Not good, right? You cost me a fortune! Do you have any idea? Any? I have guys in R&D working on cold fusion powered giant robots who spend less money than you've wasted on freeing animals from their cages. And Iridium ore. Oh my god, the Iridium ore! If I'd seen any evidence at all, a shred of it, that you had been using that Iridium ore to make something that, you know, we could sell or patent or eat, I wouldn't care, but... Now that... It's a pretty interesting little gun there, huh? Look at it all gun-shaped. This is no gun, Mr. Strongfork. This is my... device. Okay. This device. Gun. This device is going to achieve something no one ever has. Something no one has come close to. Replicating the powers of a siren with the pull of a trigger. Now that's a pitch. Keep going, keep going. I'm serious. This is exciting. The Cold Fusion Robot guys, they give a fun presentation, but it's always, you know, a little, a little much. Think about it. Can you afford not to develop this technology? Oh god, can I? Can you? I don't know. Okay, decent pitch. I give it a C-. minus. Enough to not get you fired. Yet. So. I'm gonna need a demonstration to see what this adorable little game-changer of yours can do. Absolutely, sir. If you have space in your schedule in two weeks' time... Now? I meant now. There's no time like the present, right? So, present! But I haven't... It hasn't... It's in progress, and... It doesn't do anything, does it? No, no, it, it does. Just let me explain. Oh, by all means. And by all means, I mean this had better be really, really good, or you're fired. It does like a zap, and then whatever was there is like poof. Poof? Poof. Not boom? Poof. Poof. What I'm saying here is that I've invented a device that can transport your problems to another location without need of physical harm or death. Everyone wins, or at least... No one dies! <laughs> so, to clarify, you have spent all the money and resources at your disposal that I gave you, from my disposal, to build a gun that does not kill people? I've built a device. Gun. Device that doesn't kill. It just sends people on a little vacation. A vacation to death? No, just a vacation. They literally vacate. Our customers don't want to send people on vacation. They want to send them to death! Okay, okay. <laughs> you know what? Show me. Show me or put it on the desk and leave my office. Okay. I, uh, I think you're really going to like this, sir. <sighs> I am waiting to be deeply, deeply impressed here. I mean, floored, really, at this point, and I, <laughs> I've seen some shit, so... Bar is high. Oh my god. Oh my god! Right? That wasn't the blast, dummy! It was my... It was on display! I can't... Oh, oh my god. Oh, oh. Okay, okay, okay. Impressive. It's very impressive. Now, you know, reverse phase. <laughs> Unzap. De-eliminate. Bring it back. There's no reverse switch, sir. It only does the one thing. So far. It's a prototype. Well, where the hell did it send my stuff? I, uh, do not know. <laughs> so it's just... gone? Gone forever. Like so many fabric scraps in the wind. Coasting through the ether. I'll never see that tie again. I can get you some logical things, sir. It won't be the same. Mr. Strongfork! CEO of the Atlas Company, I am your assistant! Uh, yeah, Timmy, I know. Then now is my time to shine! Let me assist you! 
Wait, 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 Timmy, what? I will go on a quest to retrieve what you have lost, uh? <gasps> Rescue mission! You would do that? For me? Of course I would. Mr. Strongfork! CEO of the Atlas Company. Doing anything and everything for you is literally the purpose of my existence. Yikes. Yeah, well, that's a fair point, actually. All right. Dr. Dar, let's try this again. On Timmy. I'm ready! Timmy? Timmy! If he doesn't come back, you'll be hearing from me. Specifically the sound of my tears. He'll definitely come back. I think. Someday. Can I just say, for a gun... Device. ...that's designed to be non-lethal, that thing is really doing some damage. Thank... you? Not a compliment. You can't control it. You barely know what it does, except that it doesn't kill things, which makes it useless. It isn't designed to kill. Not everything needs to harm people. I feel harmed. I feel very personally harmed. Just not in a way that's profitable. Oh my god, why? Oh, Timmy, where are you when I need you most? You've reached Reese Strongfork, the CEO of Atlas Corporation. Well, well. If it isn't Reese Strongfork. <laughs> Susan Coldwell, CEO of TDR. Why, why are you calling me? You know what? Can you hold on for just a sec? Dr. Dar, you may go. And if it wasn't clear already, uh, you're fired. But, sir... <laughs> Susan, how they hang in. <laughs> Perky as ever, Reese. And you? Eyes and limbs all accounted for? Oh, yep. All good over here. Doing just great. Better than. Was there, uh, something you needed? You know the drill. I can't kill my target until they say their full name out loud and I am able to confirm its match against the name in the database. That's where you come in. So you must get my target to say their full name out loud. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, the same my first rodeo. What is a rodeo? Oh, it's when like ranchers rad bucking. You know what? Never mind. Very well. What did they do, whoever you're about to kill? A man named Jamison Harwin kicked his neighbor's pet scat pup. So the neighbor contracted me to punish him. And? Skags are awful. No, this one was cool. Psst, I doubt a skag. It learned how to ride a skateboard. You show me that skag-kicking piece of trash right now! 